Hello everybody, it's Marty Windle here. I just thought I'd give you a quick debrief of the examination. Just start your exam, I'll give you a debrief about what came up and some of the feedback I've got from students who sat the examination. So in terms of the examination, a lot of people have given me feedback that they were under a lot of time pressure. Many of the people in the exam hall they sat with did not complete the examination. They did not complete the exam. So it's something to take into account when you're in the exam that time management is such an important factor in helping you pass the examination. The second element of feedback I received was in relation to the pre-scene. Pre-scene, they said, was more important for industry analysis, but in terms of examples, there was only about 10% of the pre-scene was relevant in terms of examples for answering the question. Most of the information you need was given in the post-scene. So, all the people who did lots of emphasis on the pre-scene and memorized it, it was the post-scene that had the most examples that you're going to be using in your examination. Now, there are two versions of the exam, so which you might have got version one or you might have got version two. So I'll go through both versions of the examination with you. Now, there are some similarities between them. Risk did come up in both papers in the exam. There's also the topic of sustainability stroke environmental integrated reporting that did come up in both papers. And there was also an emphasis on technology in both papers. So this idea of technology, either using AI or data analytics, it did come in both papers. And we did talk about that in the pre-scene analysis. So let's have a look at the first exam. The first exam uh, they talked about cultural change with a new CEO in the organization. In the pre-scene, I did mention culture and the importance they've emphasized on values in the organization, on core values. For the first exam, the second question was about non-executive directors. Why are they important? But also the importance of board diversity in the organization, having a mix of skills and backgrounds. So that one, I didn't spot that one at all. It's something that just came up. AI did come up in the examination, but it was AI in a specific scenario, which was about training. I talked about AI in the pre-scene, that you should read the examiner's article. You had then to use that article and apply it to specifically to training, the training of pilots. So it's something that you could talk about in the examination. But exam one, risk report and the consequences of risk. It's something we emphasize quite a lot in the pre-scene analysis, that there's a lot of risk analysis and risks facing this industry. And that did come up in the actual exam. The final two, final question, because there was three questions altogether in exam one, was about KPIs, some financial analysis. And then they asked about what I mentioned in the pre-scene analysis that was there about integrated reporting. And I did mention in the pre-scene that integrated reporting was going to be a very important topic in the examination. And luckily that did come up in exam one. If we move on to the second version of the exam, the first question they asked about was about entrepreneurial skills and leadership style. That was introduced mainly in the post-scene information, and you had to talk about how the leadership style helped to affect the organization and the values in the company. So it's a little bit about culture, sort of values you could talk about in the exam. Second question was about this environmental element, the CSR, corporate social responsibility. And I did emphasize that in the pre-scene material, there was quite a lot there about sustainability kept being mentioned in the pre-scene, and that did come up in the post-scene analysis and was a question in exam two. In the pre-scene, I said I talked about the possibility of a question on suitability, acceptability, feasibility in terms of providing additional routes. That did come up. Uh, in the examination, but they also added suitability, acceptability, feasibility in terms of adding additional business class seats onto the plane. So it did come up in the exam. There was a question about suitability, acceptability, feasibility, which seemed to be the direction they were going in in the pre-scene. Then there was something we didn't spot at all, which was financing options about how they're going to finance the planes. How are they going to lease the planes in the future? Should they choose debt or should they choose a different form of leasing for the planes in the future? They're going to buy 25 additional aircraft. So we didn't really spot that at all. That was something we didn't think about 
in the uh, pre-scene analysis, although we did mention the impact on owning your own planes and the effect on gearing. There was also then a question about risk, but this time they asked about the risk assessment framework in the exam, and they talked about cyber, financial, and security risks. We did talk about that quite a bit in the pre-scene analysis, but you had to use the risk assessment framework and decide whether to transfer, avoid, reduce, or accept. The last part of the exam, I did say it in the pre-scene, I said data analytics. I did write an article mm -hmm. about data analytics as well. So that was there in the pre-scene uh, material and I did spot it and I did write the article. So hopefully that helped you in the exam. The last part of the exam was about disruptive technology. So we didn't spot that at all uh, in the, in the pre-scene material. Mm -hmm. So I think overall... The analysis of the pre scene my analysis was pretty good. We did get most of those key trends, and the articles I wrote, they were relevant uh, to the examination. So I hope they helped you. Keep watching my channel. Please like and subscribe to my Facebook and my Twitter account, and we hope to see you with a successful exam result for your September exam. Good luck.